Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 1st, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today we got some word from the Spring Project itself regarding the vulnerability that has commonly been referred to as Spring for Shell. It now has a CVE 2022 22965 and they provided some guidance on when you may or may not be vulnerable to uh, this particular uh, problem. First of all, you need to be running JDK 9 or later. Uh, that already has been known yesterday. Also, you need to be using the Spring MVC or the Spring Webflux components in order to be uh, vulnerable. More details uh, within our diary and also, of course, uh, from the advisory that was published uh, by Spring. Now, we are seeing a number of exploit attempts for this vulnerability. Nothing really too crazy at this point. Actually, uh, quite a few less than what we saw with Log4j. Less researchers at this point sort of uh, probing it. And really, the probes we see so far are really just sort of... uh, Checking it out, uh, seeing if you may be vulnerable. Also looking for already pre-installed web shells because one way this vulnerability would be exploited is by someone essentially reconfiguring logging in the application in order to create a web shell on the vulnerable system. So in short, no log for j as far as the scale of this vulnerability goes. Uh, only very specific applications are vulnerable. But if you're running one of those applications that uses uh, these particular uh, libraries in a particular configuration, uh, then you certainly should update and patches are available now. But hey, if you don't have any Java applications to patch, maybe take a look at your Apple devices. Apple today released updates for macOS, uh, Catalina, iOS, and iPadOS. And two vulnerabilities are being addressed here. One of the vulnerabilities affects uh, all of uh, the above uh, operating systems. It's a CVE 2022 22675 and uh, this vulnerability is apparently already actively being exploited. So certainly critical and uh, something that you should patch quickly. Again, a uh, patch is available for macOS Monterey, iOS, iPadOS. Nothing yet for older versions of macOS. Sometimes Apple releases a separate security update a couple days later for older versions like Catalina or Bixer. And now let's come to our segment of devices you probably should not connect to the internet directly and maybe should not have bought in the first place. And in this case, we have a paper by Bitdefender about two vulnerabilities in Wisecam. Now, Wisecam is one of those uh, cheap uh, security cameras that people like. And Bitdefender found two vulnerabilities, an authentication bypass and a remote control execution flaw. Now, there's also an unauthenticated access to the content of the SD card of the camera. The disclosure timeline starts back in March of 2019, and uh, patches have just been released earlier uh, this year. However, only if you're lucky enough to have one of the more recent versions of this camera, version 2 or 3, the version 1 of the camera, which is vulnerable, is no longer being updated. Of course, you could always just throw it out and buy something else from another vendor that sells vulnerable cameras. Of course, if you don't expose these devices direct to the internet, you put them behind a firewall, but uh, that's very half patches for you for PsychCell. PsychCell released a security advisory for a command injection and a cross-site request forgery vulnerability in its Armor home routers. It's sort of interesting uh, how these uh, two bugs potentially could work together. The command injection vulnerability can only be exploited from the LAN interface, but the cross-site request forgery vulnerability allows an attacker to actually use a browser on the LAN side to send requests uh, to the router. So uh, that's how this could be exploited by you potentially visiting a malicious website 
and being exposed to JavaScript code that would then exploit the cross-site request forgery vulnerability. And just in case you missed it, uh, today is also the World Backup Day. And the one challenge for you here is to check if you do have an offline backup that's at least one month old or more recent. And if not, well, maybe it's a good time to order a cheap USB drive and make one. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.